Welcome back everyone to our Hero Forge painting time and this time we're going to be painting the Explorer. Along with selling custom miniatures, Hero Forge also lets you design your own miniature and buy an STL file and to test out how it's going to work printing their miniatures at your home, they actually have some example files that you can download and print. And one of them is the Explorer here. So if you want to follow along and you have a 3D printer, you can print it out and follow along with me. First thing I need to point out is the color of our primer. We are going to be using black primer today, which is actually my preferred color primer. And I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons of using a black primer as opposed to gray or white. Now the biggest pro is if you don't put paint over it, no one's going to see it. Meaning that you can leave black in the recesses or hard to reach areas and most people are not going to notice it. At least much less than if you left white primer showing in the recesses of your miniature. And one of the biggest negatives of black primer is that some colors do not show up well over a black coat. So you need to build up layers or put an undercoat on occasion. Perfect example, skin tones. For our Explorer, I am starting with an undercoat of hull red on which we are going to layer our other lighter flesh colors. Without putting this layer down, our skin would look kind of drab and very dull going straight over the black primer. With our undercoat down, we could then start really working on our flesh tones. And remember the undercoat is just that, it's kind of like the primer. It's meant to be underneath and we're going to cover it completely up. So this mixture of beige red and burnt red is actually our deep shade layer that we're going to use for the skin. From this point on, it's not much different than any of the other times we've painted skin tones in this video series. We have our paint thin, we slowly build up our layers through the process of layering, and just work our way through our base coats and up to our highlights. Normally when painting skin, I'd work our way up to our base coat of just straight beige red and then start mixing in our highlight color of basic skin tone. However, in this case, I decided to keep the skin a little bit more red, a little bit more warm, and mix the basic skin tone right into our beige red, burnt red mixture that we used in the previous step. With our skin tone done, we could then add a little bit of life and color to the face with a very thin glaze of gory red. Remember, we want to be using essentially barely colored water here. And just a few brush strokes, a little bit on the tip of the nose, a little in the cheek area, gives much more life to the miniature. And if you wanted to also add makeup onto your miniature, you can do that as well at this stage. So here is a, another benefit of using black primer. It gives you an instant dark or black line wherever you need it. When we're painting the dress, we want a good distinct line separating the dress from the skin, from the belts, and all the other things attached to it. And if we paint cleanly, 
we can leave the black primer a thin line of it between all those areas and that's going to give us a nice sharp contrast between one item and another. We are only going to be using three coats of paint on our dress and a couple reasons for that. First of all, we do not need to undercoat here because the green we are using covers the black primer well enough. We do not have to put an undercoat. The second reason is because we have so much less to highlight here as opposed to what we had to do on her skin. For the skin, we had all the contours in the face, we have the arms, we have to paint the underside of the arms, the top side of the arms, and all that. However, for the dress, we don't have a whole lot of folds in it, it's fairly flat. So we don't need to put as much contrast on the dress as we did on the skin to make it look good. A base coat, a highlight, and that dark line is all we need. An easy way to add a spark of detail to something is to do a little freehand, and you shouldn't be afraid of freehand when it's as simple as this. I base coated the trim with our dark green, and now mixing in some pale yellow once again and white, I'm just adding little hash marks to the trim, and that's small little detail. It's very easy to do, anyone could do it, and it makes the entire dress look so much more interesting. And then to emphasize our simple pattern a little bit more, smaller lines of white within those little stripes that we made. So we can use a larger brush, larger tip brush for the first round, and then we just switch to a finer tip brush for the second. Time to do our leather and as a time saving device I'm going to be using my camo black brown here and I'm painting everything that's going to be remotely painted brown. I'm going to shade it or undercoat it with this color because this can be used like I said as a shade color or an undercoat color for virtually any type of brown. So while we have it out let's go ahead and paint all the brown areas are on the miniature and once again remember we want to paint clean we want to keep that nice dark edge that we have still have from our black primer better to preserve it now than to try to paint it in by hand later on with the belt and the sword sheath we don't have a whole bunch of folds or creases we have to worry about highlighting or shading much like we did with the dress so in this case once again all we need is a base coat two highlights however in this case we need a little more when we get to the end Because the belt's going to have a nice straight edge on it, we need to emphasize that a whole bunch. And by mixing in a good amount of buff, really raising the amount of contrast, we can go around either with a perfect straight line or I'm doing it more of a serrated line to show a more worn, weathered belt. And because we have that light color right next to our black primer, our dark line, it really emphasizes our contrast. We have this very light color, then we have blackness, the edge where we drop off that area between the belt and the dress. So it really defines those two different areas very well. A 
for the armor, I'm going to show you another time saver as well as another place where the size and the item that we're painting determines how much shade or highlighting it's going to need. For the shoulder pads, I decided to go with a brown bronze type metal with a steel trim. So for the inside, I painted that with Lejo Model Air Rust. And that's all it is. It's just a base coat. That's all we need right now. Now for the steel, we have much more of that and it's segmented greater. Uh, the boots, for example, are going to be all steel. So we're going to need two coats for that. First one, we have black mixed with our steel to darken it. And then second layer is going to be pure steel. So we have all our armor painted, we have our steel, we have our brown metal, and now we need to wash them. And to do both, all we need is black ink. Both the steel and the rust can be uh, shaded with black, so it makes more sense just to do them both at the same time. And using our ink will give us a nice crisp edge around our armor, separating the brown and steel areas. For the hair, we are going to go with brown with a slight chestnut hue for that. And so we need to begin with flat brown, and now we are applying highlights of beastie brown. And for the hair, we want to paint it with texture, which means the paint's a little bit thicker, so we have a little bit more control to it. It's still thinned out of the bottle, but not as thin as it was when we were painting the robe, for example. For the hair we paint in sections, highlighting any raised areas of the hair, first with the beastie brown, and then reapplying that highlight in a smaller area with a little bit of plague brown mixed in. So let's paint a little flame. First of all, we do have to undercoat the torch uh, because of the black primer. Also, we want a smooth coat to build up upon. So any off-white color would work. I just use whatever I had on my palette. And then we're beginning with a base coat of flat yellow. Now painting the torch is not that different from painting the hair with the exception of two things. First of all, we want the paint a little bit thinner here because we don't want uh, a coarse highlight on the hair is fine. We want a smoother highlight because we're painting fire here. And secondly, we are painting in reverse. While we normally paint from darkest to lightest shade to highlight, in this case, we're doing the reverse. We're painting from a yellow base coat and we're gonna add scarlet to the raised areas. So as we get away from the heart of the flame, uh, the flames turn a little bit more orange. We're using scarlet for this, so rather than using orange and then having to mix in a little bit of red, we can just mix in small amounts of the scarlet. However, we do not want to work our way all the way up to scarlet. We want to stick in the orange range of colors. And remember, if you do go a little bit too orange or a little bit too red, you can always go back, add a little bit of yellow towards the center, even do a slight yellow wash to clean things up a little bit. Last thing we're going to paint is the book and for fun we are going to paint it illuminated. That means we're going to paint some pretty pictures. I started off by painting the pages. I just used khaki and some odd brown color for that. Doesn't matter too much uh, but painting the border now and I'm starting off first began with a hard edge of charred brown and then I'm adding spots of flat earth on top of that and now I'm adding far smaller spots of plague brown. Obviously I'm not trying to paint any sort of exact pattern here. Remember when we're talking about scale uh, you really couldn't see a border of an illuminated book. So some random squiggly dots is good enough.
And then just for a picture here or there, once again, uh, just doing a block of dark gray and then putting some color on top of that. Uh, not trying to paint anything specific, just trying to get some sort of vague shape there. So I use some blue and red and a little bit of white. Uh, then for the lettering, uh, using a mix of black and white, mainly because I don't want to use straight black because that'd be a bit too intense. Uh, but once again, considering scale, you don't have to actually draw or write little letters into the book. Little squiggly lines is all you need to do and it looks fine. And that is our finished Explorer primed in black. The main thing I want to point out with the black primer is it works because of the areas that you can't see. Not only did we use the black primer as a dark line where needed, but all the areas where I didn't paint, where you're probably not even thinking about it, like the underside of the dress around the pants, uh, areas that I didn't bother having to touch uh, around the back of the sheath, there's still black primer there and you wouldn't be able to tell, you're, you can't tell when looking at it, but if we primed it with white, that would stick out like a sore thumb. And also, I personally find it much easier if you follow my method of layering paints because it goes from shade to highlight and so it just feels natural starting with black primer. So that is it for this one. Hope you enjoyed and get painting everybody. Bye bye.